Good evening, ladies, gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's debate. My name is Asher Harton, and I'm the chairman, and Mr. Benini is the timekeeper. This debate will be judged by a panel of three adjudicators, who are Mr. Aidman, Mr. Lebrou, and Mrs. Lowen. The topic of this debate is that the university hex debt should be abolished. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Endeavour College, and the negative team seated to my left is also from Endeavour College. The speaking time for this debate is six minutes, with a double bell at the end of your speaking time. A warning bell will sound at five minutes, and a continuous bell will ring 30 seconds after the final bell. Please switch off your mobile phones and any other electronic devices. I now declare this debate open. <laughs> I call upon the first affirmative speaker, Eleni Dufault. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and Mr. Chairperson. The topic for tonight's debate is that universities' hex debt should be abolished. We, the affirmative team, firmly believe the statement to be true. As the affirmative team, we define the word university as a higher education institution offering degrees and research opportunities. We define the word hex as a student loan scheme for Australian higher education costs. And finally, we define the word abolished as getting rid of in its entirety, which my team will later discuss alternatives to. Tonight, I will be discussing the flaws of HEX and how HEX is an issue for many disadvantaged groups, focusing on Aboriginal Australians, and how HEX impacts student mental health. Our second speaker will speak to you about indexation and alternative solutions to the HEX problem. And finally, our third speaker will summarise. To begin with, I will tell you about the flaws of HEX. As of 2023, the average student debt for students was around 30 grand, with many facing repayments that easily go over 10% of their income once they earn over 50 grand, according to the Australian Taxation Office. The Productivity Commission states that around 40% of students do not repay their HEX debt within the standard time frame, leading to harsh amounts paid in interest. Our second speaker will provide examples of this. Moreover, studies from companies such as the Mitchell, Mitchell Institute, which I will talk more about later, indicate graduates from disadvantaged backgrounds are burdened by this debt as they often face lower starting salaries and higher unemployment rates. In fact, a report from the Mitchell Institute highlights that nearly one in five graduates struggle to find full-time employment within four years of graduating, meaning that if they are not over the 50 grand threshold during this period, they will not even be able to start paying off their HEX. Thus, while HEX is, aims to promote higher education, it places a burden on students, undermining the very purpose of fostering equity and opportunity in education. Secondly, I will tell you about how access to education remains a vital issue for marginalised groups, especially Indigenous Australians, particularly concerning HEX. While HEX seeks to enhance accessibility, it may unconsciously act as a deterrent for disadvantaged groups in our society, such as Aboriginal Australians, as their median weekly income is $451 less than non-Indigenous Australians. I will explain this in depth shortly, but essentially the financial risks associated with HEX often enforce barriers to enrolment. Aspects such as economic instability and a lower than average household income within Aboriginal communities further um, is further apprehension about occurring debt. For example, a study by the Australian Council for Educational Research reveals that Indigenous Australians constitute a mere 1.4% of higher education enrolments in 2021, highlighting underrepresentation. Gaps in statistics further reveal the challenges faced by Aboriginal students. In 2020, enrolment for Aboriginal Australians in higher education stood at approximately 17%, weighted with around 44% for non-Indigenous Australians. Moreover, completion rates reflect similar inequalities. While roughly 70% of non-Indigenous students completed their degrees, the figure for Indigenous students is only 50%. Additionally, the median weekly income for Aboriginal Australians is about $626, significantly lower than $1,077 earned by their non-Indigenous counterparts. 
intensifying fears about around hex debt repayments. These challenges are a hesitance to pursue further education, manifesting a pressing need for the abolishment of hex to address these systemic barriers. For my final point, I will talk to you about how hex affects student well-being. The correlation between financial stress and mental health issues is, is evident in these alarming statistics. For example, the Australian Bureau of Statistics highlights that suicide remains the leading cause of death for individuals 15 to 44 years old, a demographic highly comprised of students. Distressingly, they also highlight that one in four university students experience suicidal intention, with financial pr pressure being a significant contributing factor. HEX creates a large financial burden that adds to the stress of students faced from academic demands and uncertainty about job opportunities. The National Student Wellbeing Working Group reports further on this issue, pointing out that the increasing stress from financial concerns can lead to mental health repercussions, including anxiety and depression. While education is meant to empower, HEX instead shackles students to financial insecurities. Imagine if you were a young student with limited to no income who would have spent the bare minimum of 18 grand on a degree, which according to University of Adelaide is the cheapest degree you can buy. Keep in mind that this does not include indexation, which our second speaker will talk to you more about. Considering the statistic I mentioned before, which is 40% of students cannot afford to pay off their hex, which means that you would be a young student going through university knowing it may be possible that you will never pay off your debt, let alone buy a house and build a life. So by abolishing hex, we could significantly improve mental health outcomes, thereby reducing suicidal intentions among young students. So hex does not just impose a financial cost, it poses a profound threat to the student's well-being. In conclusion, ladies, gentlemen, and Mr. Chairperson, we, the affirmative team, believe that hex debt should be abolished. Thank you. I now call upon the first negative speaker, Rachel Ranch. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and Mr. Chairperson. The topic of this evening's debate is that HEX should be abolished. We, the negative team, believe this statement to be false, and tonight I will be telling you why. But first, I will provide a definition. Whilst we agree with the definition provided by the affirmative team, we would like to add some further context to this debate. In the context of this debate, this means that if HEX was to be abolished, university students will need to fully pay for their education upfront, be offered grants or scholarships, equity model of funding, have it funded by the government like it is in Germany, or other options that has not yet been determined. Now, I will rebut the first speaker's points. The first affirmative speaker claims that abolishing HEX would improve, would improve mental health by reducing financial stress. However, the Australian Psychological Society notes that income contingent payments structure of HEX already alleviates much of this stress by ensuring that repayments are manageable relative to graduates' in income. Universities also provide mental health support and resources to ma help manage financial stress effectively. Therefore, the current system is designed to address mental health concerns related to debt. Tonight, I will demonstrate that the capacity of the government to adequately fund a world-class high, higher education system is limited. And then, I will argue, given this, that abolishing HEX would discourage lifelong learning and harm Australia's productivity. Our second speaker, Olivia, We'll be discussing personal responsibility and incentives, income contingent payments, and balanced funding models. 
Our third speaker, Alex, will be providing a summary for our points for the evening. Now to some history about HEX. The government has limited capacity to pay for the entirety of the tertiary education system. This was a rationale for its introduction in 1989. According to Carol Lai, a researcher from the Parliament of Australia Library, more students were finishing year 12, leading to more people wanting to enter university. Funding the entire education system was putting a large strain on the budget and economy. Thus, HEX was introduced. Now to my first point for the evening. Today, more jobs require a university qualification, so more people seek a university education. This means the cost to the government to provide for all these extra students is increasing. How are we expecting this to be funded? According to the Parliament of Australia, the Australian government has a debt of $894.9 billion, and this is growing due to the pressure of an ageing population, geopolitical instability, the NDIS, and increasing levels of natural disasters. Unless the government raises taxes significantly during a cost of living crisis, its ability to fully fund higher education is limited. Or they could tax businesses, making Australia more uncompetitive and affecting graduate employment outcomes. According to the 2023 to 2024 federal government budget, the funding for higher education is $11.3 billion per year on an ongoing basis. However, as stated by Carol Lai from uh, the Parliament Library, if HECS were to be abolished, then the initial costs of the government would be the current student debt of $74 billion plus an additional $9 billion each year to maintain a HECS-free university education like Germany and Sweden. If we need to spend billions more on paying for university fees, there is a need to spend less elsewhere. What should be cut? Health? defence, disability services, or something else. The government could increase the number of the international students to cross-subsidise domestic students, but the Higher Education Minister, Jason Clare, has capped foreign student numbers due to the impact they have on the housing crisis. So this is simply not an option. The only other plausible option is to reintroduce upfront fees but that will make it harder for lower income families to access university, as according to the Australian's University Accord report published this year. HEX has allowed an increase from 16% to 27% over the past 20 years of low SES students to attend university. Reintroducing full fees would make the socioeconomic divide even greater. This shows that the government would be unable to afford the financial burden that abolishing HECS would cause. This leads me to my second and final point for the evening. Abolishing HECS would discourage lifelong learning because people would have to save significant amounts of money if they wanted to get another qualification to upskill or change careers. Having to save enough to afford upfront fees would be a disincentive for people to change careers, locking them into jobs they might be unsuited for or dissatisfied with. Economists like Judith Sloan from Flinders University say people being able to retrain is important if Australia is to address its poor productivity performance. This, so getting rid of the hex is not in the national interest. And as I stated before, university cannot be free as uh, we just simply cannot afford it. So, ladies, gentlemen, and Mr. Chairperson, in conclusion, HEX should not be abolished. There is a limited capacity for the government to adequately fund a world-class tertiary system. Furthermore, abolishing HEX debts would discourage lifelong learning. Thank you. Now call upon the second of February speaker, Paige Emery. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and Mr. Chairperson. 
The topic of tonight's debate is that the university hex debt should be abolished. We, the affirmative team, firmly believe this statement to be undoubtedly true. Our first speaker introduced the base fundamental flaws, the effects on students' mental health, and how the hex debt negatively impacts those from lower socioeconomic and disadvantaged backgrounds. Tonight, I will be rebutting some points the negative team has made and discussing indexation rates and alternative solutions to the HECS problems, including employer contributions and more affordable course options. I will first begin with rebuttal. The first negative speaker has to try to tell you that with the HECS debt being omitted, the financial burden of funding this higher education would fall on the shoulders on taxpayers. This is a common misconception of the public, as this would stem from the existing debt that students would have be, would be omitted. This initial price would be insignificant to the overall gain in the long run, with students being able to access higher education easier. This would prove to increase the power of the areas that these students would go into. The negative team have tried to tell you that there are support systems for mental health in place. While it is true that support services for mental health exist, the alarming statistics show that they are not sufficient. A study by Beyond Blue found that 49% of Australian university students experience mental health issues, with one in four students reporting significant psychological distress. Many students struggle to access these resources due to long waiting time and limited availability. In fact, the National Health Survey from 2017 to 2018 revealed that only 25% of individuals with mental health conditions sought professional help. Moreover, the HEX repayment system can exacerbate financial stress, leading to worsened mental health outcomes. Research by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare states the, that financial difficulties are a major contributor to psychological distress among students. Rather than abolishing HEX, we should consider reforms that alleviate this burden, ensuring students that they can focus on their studies and utilise mental health services effectively, like our first speaker mentioned. The negative team have tried to tell you that the only other way to get around the HEX problem is to pay upfront, but this is incorrect for reasons that I will soon explain. My first point is that indexation rates are not as good as a regular loan. Indexation rates are defined as a standard process used to adjust the value of government programs for the changes in the level of prices, as said by the Australian government themselves. Indexation rates work in unity with the HEX debt, allowing students to pay off their university finances after their degree completion. To be clear, this completion can either be quitting the degree or graduating. According to the Australian Department of Education, indexation rates have been at 4.7% since, since 2020, which has resulted in many financial problems for university students. Though they are being dropped down to a 4% rate, this is still too much for most students compared to the 3.8% pre-COVID. From SBS's Insight, episode Uni Blues, Sikram explains that he had a heavy lack of education regarding indexation rates going into his university degree, and that he had to research into government articles to find out that the hex debt had been largely affected due to the COVID-19 inflation. This implies that indexation rates have the opportunity to change at any moment due to prices, living costs and wages, as opposed to a regular loan, which generally stays the same. According to the Study Assist website from the Australian Government, the amount from the total indexation rates is higher than for a regular fee or loan. In fact, indexation rates and the HEX debt are so problematic that according to the Australian Taxation Office, changes are being made to the HEX debt already. There are far more options on how to pay for a university degree, which includes choosing between the, using the consumer price index or the wage price index, whichever is lowest. This, along with the fact that a university student will be automatically credited with the difference, just to name a few beneficial changes. Indexation rates are not at all helpful to one's education, and according to a report from the federal government written by Nagol Kagati in late 2023, 59% of university students reported that indexation rates had heavily impacted their ability to buy a home, and a further 51% are still paying off their hex debt and indexation rates in their 40s. Imagine this, you're a 40-year-old mother of two, worrying about, worrying about providing a sustainable life for your children, but you still have to pay off your university debts from more than 20 years ago. To follow, my second and final point is alternative solutions to the HEX problems. I will mainly explain two solutions, those being more affordable course options and the popularisation of employer contributions. Firstly, more affordable course options will allow for the HEX debt to be lowered for students, especially those in disadvantaged groups, as mentioned by our first speaker. 
According to University of Australia, in January of 2024, a variety of course choices will not only benefit the mental health of students, but also their financial freedom. For example, according to the University of Adelaide website, a business degree is at least $16,323 for its entirety, and Samuel from Insight episode Uni Blues explains that his business degree, and I quote, was almost entirely useless and could have been a lot more helpful and realistic with other affordable course options. University students genuinely need more affordable course options for a higher education. And, according to a Springer article written by Gary Neal Marx, which was written in 2009, the Australian government were planning on doing this over a decade ago, but failed to implement it due to a simple lack of effort on the government's part. According to the Studying in Germany organisation, Germany have implemented more affordable course options, which include tuition-free public universities, not to be confused with free education, but an education less focused on how much money the universities can make, but how they can benefit each and every student. My second alternative solution to the HEX problem is employer contributions within larger companies becoming more popularised. Employees can pay for some or all of a worker's higher education fees. So, ladies, gentlemen and Mr Chairperson, in conclusion, the university HEX debt should absolutely be abolished because of indexation rates and that there are many alternative solutions to the HEX problem. Thank you. I now call upon the second negative speaker, Olivia Vassilou. Good evening, Mr Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen. Our topic is that the university hex debt should be abolished. We, the negative team, believe this statement to be false and as the negative team, we will clearly explain why this is incorrect. But first, I'll rebut the opposing team's points. The second affirmative speaker has criticised indexation of HEX debt, arguing it exasperates financial burdens. However, they fail to acknowledge that the HEX debt indexation is designed to align with either inflation or the wage price index, whichever is lower, ensuring that debt grows at a manageable rate relative to income. This indexing system is highlighted by recent studies and proposed legislation and is noted that it is intended to protect graduates from unimaginable debt increases. Therefore, maintaining HEX with its current indexation system ensures that debt remains fair and sustainable. They also suggested that HEX could lead to increased financial strain in the future. Yet this argument does not consider the recent reforms that aim to align debt growth with, with wage increases and inflation. For example, the new indexation measures, as reported by the Australian government in 2024, cap debt increases to align with the, lower, the lowest of inflation or wage growth. These safeguards are designed to prevent excessive debt accumulation and ensure that repayments remain manageable. Maintaining HEX with these protections help mitigate future financial strain. Our first speaker has outlined the historical context and argued that HEX promotes lifelong learning, while also highlighting the government's limited capacity to fund a world-class higher education system. Now to my first point. HEX encourages personal responsibility and initiative by requiring students to invest in their education. This gives students a sense of ownership and transforms education from a mere entitlement into a valuable investment. This is supported by data from the Australian Department of Education, which shows that students with HEX debt have an 84% completion rate compared to 69% for those in systems without financial commitments. This mindset of investing in their own future drives students to excel academically, knowing their financial stability depends on it. Research by Eliza Birch and Paul Miller from the University of Western Australia confirms that students with loans are often more motivated and focused on their studies. Furthermore, Andrew Norton from the University of Melbourne notes that HEX debt prompts students to plan their careers more strategically, aligning their career aspirations with their ability to repay. Some may argue that deferred repayments under HEX reduce personal responsibility. However, this structure enhances it, 
by allowing students to concentrate on their education and career aspirations without immediate financial strain. This is supported by a study from the Australian National University, which found that 75% of HECS graduates secured jobs within six months in their chosen field, compared to only 55% for those in systems that require immediate repayment. Thus, HECS not only promotes personal responsibility, but also supports strategic career planning and long-term financial stability. Now to my second point. HECS's income contingent repayment system promotes fairness and protects low-income earners from financial strain. Repayments are based on income, beginning only when earnings exceed a set threshold. As of 2024, the Australian Taxation Office reports that repayments start when income sits at 54,435 AUD. Graduates earning below this threshold are exempt from repayments, shielding those with lower incomes from undue financial hardship. Moreover, the system is designed to be progressive. For instance, in the 2023 to 24 financial year, individuals earning between $49,000 and $55,000 repay only 1% of their income above the threshold, while those earning between seventy dollars and $80,000 repay 4%, and those earning over $80,000 repay 5%. This tiered repayment approach ensures fairness and aligns repayments with individuals' financial capacity and circumstances. A study by Chris Watson from the Australian Council for Educational Research highlights the importance of this deferment and gradual repayment structure, noting that it provides crucial financial flexibility for graduates who might otherwise struggle with loan repayments. Abolishing HEX could limit access to higher education for disadvantaged students. For example, in the USA, USA high tuition fees and privatisation have created significant barriers to college and university access exasperating inequities. In contrast, HEX allows students from diverse backgrounds, promotes social mobility, and ensures that higher education remains accessible to all, regardless of financial circumstances or socioeconomic background. Now to my third and final point. HEX utilizes a balanced funding model that supports both universities and graduates. This system provides a stable revenue stream for higher education institutions, accounting for around 40% of university funding, as reported by the Australian Department of Education in 2023. This consistent financial support is crucial for maintaining the quality and accessibility of higher education. Additionally, the income contingent repayment structure contributes to the system's sustainability. By tying repayment obligations to graduates' financial circumstances, the system ensures contributions are made by those who are most able to pay, without placing undue burden on low-income earners. This balanced approach not only supports educational institutions, but also maintains fairness and equity, helping to manage financial responsibilities effectively across various income levels. So Madam Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to reiterate that abolishing HEX would be extremely catastrophic. The HEX system promotes personal responsibility, fairness, and provides a stable, sustainable funding source for universities. Can we truly afford to dismantle such a system? The answer is no. This is why HEX cannot be abolished. Thank you. I now call upon the third affirmative speaker, Jesse Roberts. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and Mr. Chairperson. The topic of tonight's debate is that the university hex debt should be abolished. We, the affirmative team, firmly believe this statement to be true. As our third speaker for tonight, I will first be rebutting the other team's case and then summarising our team's points. The negative team have tried to tell you that our government could simply not afford to pay for, pay for the removal of HEX debt. While it may be true that the introduction of free tertiary education in Australia has faced challenges in the past, using this as a reason that we should not attempt to introduce it again 
ignores the changing context and lessons that we can learn from those experiences. The financial landscape and global economy have changed significantly since then, with an increasing need for a highly skilled and highly trained workforce. According to the Grattan Institute, higher education funding today is more sustainable when improved through targeted reforms rather than exclusionary practices like hex debt. Additionally, many successful models, such as those in countries like Sweden and Germany, demonstrate that accessible education can be managed effectively without significant issues when designed with adequate funding and administration. Abandoning the idea of free education based on past failures and potential financial burden overlooks the potential for innovation and improvement in our education system, ultimately depriving future generations of vital opportunities for learning and growth. The second negative speaker tried to tell you that abolishing debt could dimin would diminish the sense of personal and financial responsibility among students. This is simply untrue, as it is crucial to understand that debt can act is absolutely creating significant stress and deterring engagement in studies which is undermining students' sense of responsibility. A report from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare found that over 25% of students experience high levels of psychological distress, often linked to financial pressure. By removing this burden, we would enhance students' focus on their studies and personal growth, fostering re responsibility in ways that debt simply can't provide. The negative team have also tried to tell you that indexation changes relative to income while this may be true, while this may be true to, while this may be true to say it is helpful is simply incorrect. As our first speaker has said, according to the Productivity Commission, forty percent of graduates cannot pay off their hex debt, which the negative team simply failed to acknowledge. The negative team has tried to tell you that the current hex system allows for a flexible repayment structure based on income which can relieve financial pressures on graduates and make repayments much more manageable, unlike a system that would require immediate full payment. While this may be true in part, we have already mentioned that we have already mentioned many other alternatives to the HEX system that do not require immediate repayment. The second negative speaker tried to tell you that HEX debt encourages students to complete their tertiary education as opposed to those in other systems. This is simply untrue. As our first speaker told you about, the debt pressure of HECS can lead students to remain in studies that are causing their mental health to rapidly decline, along with the financial stress from the debt itself. This simply means that HEX debt does not encourage students. The negative team tried to tell you that removing HEX debt may push away those from disadvantaged backgrounds who would still struggle to access the same opportunities without the appropriate support systems in place. This is simply false, as the impact of financial barriers on enrolment rates must be considered. According to the Grattan Institute, students from low socioeconomic backgrounds are already underrepresented in universities. Abolishing hex debt removes one of the primary financial obstacles to higher education, potentially increasing participants participation in tertiary education from these from these lower socioeconomic groups. For instance, research has shown that financial concerns are a significant deterrent for low-income students. In fact, a survey from the University of Sydney indicated that 60% or even more of students from low-income backgrounds cited financial stress as a significant barrier to their future education. By removing hex debt and implementing a system that is more inclusive to those with lower financial abilities, we directly address this barrier and create a more equitable playing field. Our first speaker, Eleni, spoke to you about the fundamental flaws of HEX. She told you of the ridiculous amount of debt that students are subject to under HEX, with many paying over 10% of their yearly income, according to the Australian Office of Taxation. In addition, more than 40% of students don't end up being able to be begin paying their debt for the first few years, leading to a compound of interest which can e increase the overall amount that students have to pay off. She then pointed out that HEX dispro disproportionately affects disadvantaged groups, particularly Aboriginal Australians, who earn nearly $500 less than non-Aboriginal Australians. 
This is leading to longer repayment times and more compounding interest, which discourages people in these groups who are pursuing higher education, ultimately causing underrepresentation of these cultures and groups in academia across the country. Finally, she talked about how hex debt is a large factor in the declining mental health of university students in Australia. Mentioning the fact that there is a proven correlation between financial stress and negative mental health, Eleni told you about the stats found by the ABS which highlight the fact that one in four students feel suicidal at times, with survey subjects saying that financial stress was a large factor in their contemplations. Then, our second speaker, Paige, told you about indexation rates and how these affect the amount of debt that HECS puts students into. She spoke to you of how indexation rates for student loans create financial burdens for students compared to traditional loans with stable rates. Thank you. I now call upon the third negative speaker, Alex Fechner. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and Mr. Chairperson. The topic of this evening's debate is that the university's hex debt should be abolished, and we, the negative team, vehemently believe this statement to be false. As the third negative speaker for this evening, I'll be summarising my team's points. However, I will first be rebutting many of the affirmative team's points. The second affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that Germany currently offers free university and it is funded by the government, so why can't Australia? However, what the affirmative team fails to state is that Germany does not have a social scheme equivalent to the NDIS. According to the Parliament of Australia, the 2023 to 2024 federal budget that the NDIS cost Australia is $41.9 billion this year. The NDIS prov provides critical services for people living with a disability, helping them live more independently and participate fully in society. So whilst Germany may have free higher education, they're most vulnerable in so society do not have the same level of assurance that they can be empowered as they operate off a pension system only. Thus, maintaining HEX remains the most viable option to allow all aspects of our social schemes to run and foster equ equally. The first affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that by abolishing HEX, more students from disadvantaged homes will be able to access university. However, we believe this statement to be severely false. However, we According to a study conducted by Bruce Chapman, a professor of the economics at National University, the relatively disadvantaged in Australia were less likely to attend universities even when there were no student fees. This provides further support for the view that a no-charge public university system that is fun financed by all taxpayers is regressive. Therefore, abolishing HEX will not help the disadvantaged in our society gain a higher education and is an excellent model to support students from disadvantaged backgrounds, as discussed by our second speaker, Olivia. Hence, maintaining HEX is crucial for effectively supporting students from diverse socioeconomic backgrounds. The second affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that mental health support systems are not sufficient. Instead of abolishing HEX, why don't we put some more funding into these mental health programs? This would be much more affordable for the government. They also mentioned that we have stated that courses must be completed, which we did not say, causing this point to be irrelevant. The first affirmative speaker claims that HEX disproportionately impacts lower income graduates. However, this argument ignores the reality that lower income earners can defer HEX payments until their increase, income increases above $54,000 in 2024. The system is specifically designed to protect these graduates from financial hardship as highlighted by the Australian Productivity Commission. Therefore, not abolishing HEX ensures continued protection for lower income graduates. The first affirmative speaker has then argued that HEX imposes a significant financial burden on graduates. However, they overlook that HEX repayments are income contingent and only required when graduates earn above a certain threshold. The Australian Productivity Commission's 2024 report highlights that this system adjusts repayments based on income. 
ensuring that those with lower earnings are not unduly pressured. Thus, preserving HECS offers a flexible and supportive repayment structure that minimises financial strain. The second affirmative speaker then warns that HEX debt can grow faster than it is repaid, so therefore it should be abolished. But what they fail to address is that HEX debt is indexed to inflation or the wage price index, whichever is lower, according to the new legislation currently being passed in Parliament. This indexing means that, grow, means that it grows in line with the cost of living, ensuring that the debt remains manageable relative to income. Studies, including those by Chapman and Higgins, show that this indexing is fair and necessary. Removing HEX could lead to more burdensome private debt structures that grow uncontrollably, as seen in the United States of America. Thus, continuing with HEX ensures that debt remains manageable and fair for all graduates. The first affirmative speaker has then argued that HEX is inequitable and disproportionately burdens certain groups of students. However, this argument overlooks the design of HEX, which is intended to become contingent. According to the Australian Council for Education in their 2024 research, the system ensures that repayments are based on the graduate's income, meaning that those with lower earnings are required to pay less, minimising the financial impact. Therefore, HEX is structured to provide a fair and equitable so solution for all students. Moving on to our summary for this evening, our first speaker, Rachel, started by demonstrating that the capacity of the government to adequately fund a world-class higher education system is severely limited. She then moved on stating that lifelong learning is promoted by HEX. Moving on to our second speaker, Olivia, she discussed the responsibility and incentive, income contingent payments and balanced funding models. So, ladies, gentlemen and Madam Chairperson, for the reasons that my team and I have stated this evening, I'm sure that you can now clearly see why hex debt in universities is highly beneficial and why it should definitely not be abolished. Thank you. And what was I supposed to do? Were you okay? Or still there? 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 Still there?
agenda changed before my very eyes. <laughs> I now invite the adjudicator, Mrs. Lowen, to come forward. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, congratulations to both teams coming this far. As the parents and the coaches will notice and note that it takes a lot of effort, and even though it's condensed in a small amount of time, you know, second and third term, a lot, a lot of work. Um, so congratulations for all of you getting here. I hope you'll be talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was a unanimous decision, which is really lucky. I'm the chairman of Debating SA, and any outliers get into terrible trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Just let you dare. Okay. They're a bit too frightened now. Um, so, they, no, so it was a, a unanimous decision. So tonight we thought that there was one team whose rebuttal was... Um, slightly better and that their actual arguments were very effective and for that reason we've awarded it to the negative team. <laughs> and the choice of best speaker award tonight was also a unanimous decision. Sorry about the horrible writing at the top here, that was... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to fix it up after that. So that goes to Olivia, congratulations. <laughs> I now call upon a member of the run-up team to give a vote of thanks. Um, congratulations to Endeavour Green, I love you guys. And um, thank you to my own team, you guys have done really, really well this season and I'm so proud of you all, I love you all so much. And thank you to my coach and the chairperson, Mr Benini, and Asha, who's a timekeeper. Thank you to the, <laughs> thank you to the parents and thank you to the adjudicators and thank you to Nazareth for hosting. I now call upon a member of the winning team to second that vote of thanks. It's hard to go after that. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to thank the adjudicators and, of course, our coaches, both of them. <laughs> Even though this one was a little bit. This is awesome. <laughs> We'd love to thank Madam Chairperson <laughs> and the opposing team, which we love. And we've been with you throughout this debating process, and it was just amazing. And you have grown so much, and we, we love you guys. And we'd like to thank, of course, the parents and everybody for coming out and supporting us every debate. It's just amazing. Thank you so much. That was really good. I don't know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't talk. It's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. I now declare this debate closed.